please welcome Zach Galifianakis. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thanks for having me. Can you reread the intro? I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I was raving about Birdman. <laughs> raving about it. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I, it's incredible. Yeah, it's an it's, incredible film. It, it's good. It's nice to say that without lying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you often lie about well, your no, films? No, but it's, uh, no, but it's just, this one is kind of so cr crazy good that you just, I mean, I was in New York uh, this past week, and um, I, I would just, I'd talk to strangers on the street, and I found myself kind of promoting the movie on the street, <laughs> uh, which is not usually the, I mean, I do pass out flyers at Third Street Promenade also, <laughs> or the nod, as I like to call it. <laughs> I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to Birdman, and I want to talk about that. But, um, first of all, this is a, 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 a we, the show is based in Canada. We're, we're airing in the United States now. Now, I understand that you lived in Vancouver for a while. Uh, on and is off. that true? Yes, I lived in uh, uh, Vancouver uh, on and off for a, f a few years. I'd say probably five or six years on and off. Yeah. And how would you characterize your Canadian sojourn? Um, I like Canada a lot. I, I find it to be more of a matriarchal society in a very good way. And uh, I find that those kind of societies are really nice societies. <laughs> I do. You're being serious? Yeah. 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 What, um, wh why would you say that about Canada? Well, <laughs> I mean it as a compliment, yeah, first yeah. of all. Um, For sure. Because this airs in Canada. No. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, the men don't talk as much there, and that's nice, for, nice it's a nice change. <laughs> well, they're, a lot quieter, of they're quieter, and if we could just get the women down here to follow the men and can't, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, and I find, I, I don't know, I just find uh, a lot of, there's a lot of strong women types from Canada. Yeah, I've absolutely. experienced, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I think there's probably a lot of people listening in Canada who wish what you were saying was more true, but, but uh, it's very nice to hear that from you. Your wife is Canadian. Is she? Isn't she? Uh, she is. I mean, it's a green card situation. Uh, <laughs> so I'd rather not air that out there. I was only, only going to ask if you, how you felt about us, about us claiming you as partially Canadian because you've married into the fold. Well, I mean, I, I, I hope to get a dual citizenship uh, to, to Canada. I think they're uh, like $30. Um, <laughs> I think it is just a vending machine you walk up to. You've so just much lost, easier. You've lost all the headway <laughs> no, you made with so Canada. It's so much easier in Canada is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just, I was there last summer. I was in Calgary and I did an open mic in Calgary um, last summer. And, I mean, if people know what open mics, you sign up, you sign your name, and you wait, and they draw your name out of a hat, and... So I went to an open mic, and I write my name, I write Zach, and then... I notice nobody's doing anything with the list that I signed, and the show goes on for two hours, and I'm sitting in the back of the room, and I go up to the hostess of the show, and I said, excuse me, my name is Zach, um, and I signed up, and I noticed that you weren't referring to the list where I signed up, and... She's like, what's your name? I said, uh, Zach. She said, what's your last name? I said, Galifianakis. She goes, uh-huh. And uh, I went to the owner, or the guy that ran the room, and he goes, uh, what's your name? I said, my name's Zach Galifianakis. I'm, I'm a stand-up. I just, he goes, you're Zach Galifianakis? I said, uh-huh. He goes, give me three pieces of ID. <laughs> so he made me give him three pieces of ID. Right. The, I go and perform at the open mic, People think I'm a, they don't believe that it's me for whatever reason. <laughs> You're a, a Zach Galifianakis impersonator. They thought that's what it was. And as the impersonator, I was doing quite well. And then when I told the audience it, that they got it was me, I started bombing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Calgary. You're... <laughs> You're kind of doing, you're doing the Zach Galifianakis right now, on, on, which is this thing that you, 
The, what is that? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's it's remarkable what you do, and you do it you do it in in various parts. You have this way of delivering almost any line, whether it's somewhat uh, serious or, or completely zany, with absolute sincerity. Where, where when did that begin? That that style, that that persona that you've so created. <laughs> I don't. I just realized I'm gonna make you. You're gonna do this now. No, right? no, no. Right. I, the, the problem with it is, is that, you know, I, being or being, if that's kind of your bend on humor, which I think you're right, it is kind of my take on it, is to be able to try to say things that have sincerity to them, but don't make sense a lot of times. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know where I get it, but the problem with it is, is that you're never taken seriously. <laughs> and I was at my sister's uh, wedding and I was giving a toast. And I think my sister had 500 people at, at the wedding. I hired her a bunch of extras. No, um, <laughs> uh, and I gave a toast and I was being sincere and I was just speaking from the heart and I started crying and uh, 500 people thought it was a joke and started laughing. <laughs> so having people laugh at you while you're crying is a very <laughs> odd it's feeling. It's difficult. You, 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 you're a kid from North Carolina. Yeah. Did you, did you grow up thinking you wanted to get into comedy? I grew up knowing, <clears throat> I knew that I wanted to entertain, but I didn't know what that meant. And being from a, a small uh, n you know, town of like 2,000 people in North Carolina, you don't really know what to do. But, we would do skits, my sister and brother and I, for my parents. Um, I remember doing a skit, sketch about the Iran-Contra affair. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we were quite political back then. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just kind of nurtured Now, wait a minute. It. What did this sketch involve? All I remember is my sister was in a, my mom's robe, and she was the Ayatollah. <laughs> right, it's very sophisticated. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, we watch the news a lot. And, um, so you develop that stuff as a kid, I guess, and then you kind of nurture it, and then you, you figure out, I wonder if you can you know, try to make a living out of it. My dad always told me growing up, he was like, if you can f figure out labor and love, if you can, you know, where you don't feel like you're working and you really love what you do, then in, you'll be, you know, you'll have a satisfying uh, adult life. And I kind of took that to heart and it, it, it meant a lot to me, that advice. So I just kind of kept trying to see if I could, you know, entertain people. And so far it's not paying off. Wow. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's totally worked. You have this in incredible career in comedy, but it feels like more recently you're, you're moving into um, acting. I don't want to say straight acting or serious acting, but, but your role in Birdman, for example, is, is a little more distinct from what you would do, say, in the, in the Hangover. Is this a conscious decision to try and... Uh... Well, the first day of Birdman, I showed up in my Hangover clothes. <laughs> um... <laughs> this is the only thing I can play! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the thing to do, I think the, the, the thought is that you try to... I mean, if you're lucky enough to have a director like Alejandro, I, and I still can't pronounce his last name. And uh, he admitted to me the other night that he doesn't even know my last name, which I like. Um, but uh, if you're lucky enough to have somebody like that throw you, uh, you, know, and I, uh, you know, a bone like that, and you can try to f make sense of it, you try to grow and try to do things different. You, I think if you're kind of a chubby, kind of loud, bearded comedian who you can kind of paint yourself into a corner. The, the Hangover franchise became so big do you, I haven't seen any of the checks. Do you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Do you do you feel do you lament? Did, did it somehow? Do you feel like it somehow pigeonholed you in a way? That no, it, no, not at all. In in fact, I mean, I think without doing those movies, and uh, I wouldn't have the opportunity to try to do other things. You know, you kind of fit you. If you're lucky, and you know, you get to be in a movie that people go see, it gets work. Uh, but you have to. You have to tell yourself, what do you want to do? You want to keep doing the same thing, or do you want to keep, or do you want to try to stretch out? And I, I mean, I don't even know. I have my tricks are kind of limited, so I don't know how much, you know, serious acting I can do. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that, 
I'm not, I don't you're, have the discipline that it takes. You know, know what I mean? I know it sounds like I'm, I'm saying this because you're on the show, but you, you are, you, you're fantastic in this film. Birdman, as is uh, uh, Michael Keaton, Edward Norton, uh, Emma Stone. I mean, the cast is, rem- it's, 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 it, I, I know I'm gushing, but I think it's quite a remarkable film. This is, uh, amongst other things, a sharp satire of Hollywood and specifically celebrity worship. Do you identify with the movie's perspective on fame? Um, I agree with everything the movie says, and it, it, it goes after everybody. It, it goes after the critics. It goes after actors and, you know, the ego that sometimes I think we actors carry. And it goes after, you know, the Hollywood system. And it's just nice to hear. It's nice to somebody have somebody say it in such a poetic way, the way uh, Alejandro, what's his name, did it. Um, <laughs> Um, and you know, the thing is, is that the difference is, is that this movie, Alejandro has, he's an artist. He, and I, I don't, he, he's this amazing guy that on the first day of shooting, um, he had the crew, this is in New York and he had the crew and the, and some of the cast members on the first day gather around a semicircle and he gave this really beautiful speech, but he had also passed out a rose to each crew, and in the back of my head, I'm like, don't do this in New York. Don't do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the crews there can be very, you know, burly, and they've seen it all. But he spoke to us about how lucky we were to be working, you know, in the thing that we want to work on. And we shouldn't lose sight of that. And there was no cynicism. Mm. None. And there's none in his, there's no cynicism in him whatsoever. The film has a lot of it, yes. tons of it. Yes. Uh, but he has this really beautiful art, and he should give seminars on how to direct because he's so so beautiful to watch. Perhaps and inspired by that, you've gotten a lot of press press over the last few days because of something you said after the screening of Birdman in New York. You said being a celebrity is shit. I did. Yes. <laughs> Do you care to expand on that? <laughs> No, I, you know, I don't really care to because <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that it was printed is my whole f- point anyway, you know what I mean? I, uh, you know, if I comment on it, then that's, I, I, I mean, you know, I might have been in a bad mood, but... Uh, uh, but you love the film, you weren't in a tent. I think you were, I mean, there is a serious uh, the, the, the subtext to that. You, you, you don't like... The Hollywood celebrity machine is, is what you were getting at, I presume, right? Well, I have, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I know it's out there, but I don't know who's running it, but I don't sign, I haven't signed up for it. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's, there's people running it and they force you to be in it, you know, in the, in the thing. You know, I don't, it sounds like I'm complaining. I just yeah. was trying to tell the truth and sometimes, you know, if you speak from your heart, people will jump on you, I guess. One of the things that really affected me about this film, I've got a couple minutes left with you here, there's a generational divide also in the film that causes tension around what it means to be quote-unquote relevant mm-hmm. these days. So is, is making great art relevance or getting a lot of clicks on social media? This is a question that comes up in the film. Um, you have 4.1 million Twitter followers. I, can I name them? <laughs> just, I know we only have two minutes. But what do you, what do you think of that divide around great well, work versus I have, getting the clicks and all? I have a Twitter account, unfortunately, because someone will say they're you, especially if you have a specific name. Right. Uh, they will say they're you, so you kind of have to, I was forced to, to do it, to join it. Um, it's to not, claim your own name. Yes, yeah. so no, no one is speaking for me, yes. you know, this... The first time I ever heard of social media, which was years ago, of course, there was this... <laughs> there was this 16-year-old in Alaska claiming to be me and uh, trying to get girls to, like... And I'm like, good luck, man. You should pick another profile, you know? <laughs> that's, uh, that's not the... So I was joined... To, I had to join MySpace for that reason. So I'm not into social media. I, I think that... Uh, I don't know. It's, I'm, old, I'm old-fashioned, I think. There's a, um, there's a, I'm very excited to hear about this new uh, show you're working on with Louis C.K. about sad clowns. Mm-hmm. It just sounds beautiful. I mean, you two working, can you, can you shed any insight on that before we let you go? Uh, I, I don't really know what it is, except we did shoot the pilot show. I should know more about what it is. <laughs> um, 
It's, uh, yeah, Louis uh, and I and this gentleman named John Kreisel kind of developed this, uh, you know, it's a show about a guy that um, studied clown theory in Paris, um, <laughs> but was, <laughs> couldn't get any clown work in Europe, and so <laughs> he had to move back to Bakersfield, California, <laughs> and be a rodeo clown. So he's this kind of bitter, sad rodeo clown who, is really just wants to be an artist. <laughs> so, I, I don't know what channel it's on. I think two or something. We're gonna look forward to that. Zach, it's, 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 a, it's an honor that you came oh, on the show. Thank you so much me. for doing Thank this. I know much. you don't do a lot of interviews. Thanks Thank for, you. Zach Galifianakis.